Hello and welcome back to SAP on Microsoft Azure. My name is Mark and as promised in one of my previous videos, we're going to talk around availability sets for SAP. So let's get started. Now, when we have a look at what Azure availability sets protect us against, there are three different types of events. The first event is unplanned hardware maintenance. And that just means that Azure detects a problem in the underlying hardware and believes that the hardware may fail soon. Therefore, a maintenance event is being scheduled, which is out of cycle. These could be quite short term. A second event is unexpected downtime and is described in the previous video. That just means, for example, a rack or a house such as a blade would simply fail with no pre-warning. And the last event is planned maintenance events. And that's just a stock standard maintenance event. For example, when the underlying host infrastructure gets patched with updates or new operating systems to run the guest systems more stable or with more scale. Now let's have a look on how this really works. As mentioned in my previous video, Azure is structured into fault and update domains. And in the picture that you can see on this slide, we have, for example, three fault domains, fault domain zero, fault domain one, and fault domain two. And fault domain protect our application against unplanned downtime. So if one of the fault domains will become unavailable, the impact to the application or to the service will only be minor because it only affects one fault domain. So for example, if we have a rack or even multiple racks comprising of storage computer network fail, the impact to the application will not be disastrous. And the same is applying to update domains, which we can see here as update domain zero, one, and two. Microsoft will ensure that only one update domain at a time is being patched. In other words, being taken down. Therefore, if you spread your application over multiple update domains, the impact to the application will only be minor and it, and it will not become unavailable. Spreading an application across multiple fault domains and up domains is a great way to increase the availability for applications such as SAP. So we've just learned that we can protect SAP applications against unplanned downtime through full domains and planned downtime, such as patching the underlying host infrastructure with update domains. But let's have a closer look on how NetWeaver based applications actually support availability sets. It's actually fairly simple. If we look at the central services, this is usually a part that we would cluster for production systems in many cases anyway. So if you cluster your central services, you would put your central services cluster into a separate availability set, which we've flagged here as availability set one. So if one of the nodes will go down, either planned or unplanned, the other node would be still available. Now that could be for an unplanned event, an automated cluster switch, or for a planned event, it would just basically mean before the nodes being shut down, you would just switch over. For application service, you would create another availability set, which is flagged here as availability set two. And that's probably even more simple because for production systems, you would have anyway more than one application server, SAP application server. Same thing, so if one of the virtual machines would become unavailable, either through a planned or unplanned event, you would simply keep the other ones running. And finally, database layer, which we flagged as availability set three, same concept as for availability set one. If a planned or unplanned event would occur, you would simply switch over either if unplanned, obviously automatically and planned, you could actually do that before. Now, my intention is not to PowerPoint you to death, which is why I would actually like to show you how you can configure availability sets for two virtual machines for, in this case, SAP application servers. So I created up front a very simple sandbox environment in my Azure subscription. I have basically a jump station on the left hand side 
and in the same vnet and in the same subnet which is probably not what you would see in a production environment i have two application servers and the database node on the right hand side and for these two sap application servers we're now going to create an availability set so what you see here is my azure dashboard from the azure portal and you see simply two virtual machines the jump host which we've discussed previously and on the right hand side you see the sap sql database system that runs the sap database server now what we want is two sap application servers running on two virtual machines which are in an availability set so let's do this we're gonna go to create resource on the left hand side of the menu and then we choose the windows server 2016 virtual machine we obviously could also simply choose linux as the operating system that wouldn't make a difference at all for what we want to do here now we leave the subscription unchanged in my case i'll change to the resource group where i run this sandbox environment in I'll give the virtual machine a virtual machine name, sub apple 001, and I leave it in Australia East, which is Sydney, and um, availability options is now the interesting part. So let's have a look at that. Azure offers us two options here, availability zones, which is gray out, and please remember what I told you in the last video around availability zones. Availability zones are currently being rolled out, globally so not every geography that will get availability zones has it already but what we have in sydney is availability sets so we're going to choose that now azure tells me that there's currently no existing availability set in which i can place this virtual machine so let's create a new one we need to give it a name and we call it sap availability set 001 and we can see we can actually even configure the full domains and update domains. Now, in my case, my subscription has some limits around um, what I can configure. So I'll leave that unchanged. But in your case, you may actually be able to configure more fault and update domains. We leave the image unchanged, but we're going to move to an SAP supported compute SKU, which um, I choose an E-series. E-Series is a very standard SAP supported compute SKU, so I'll choose that. The S stands for premium storage, which we come in a second to. I need to create a user, we call them super user, and we'll give them a password. We leave all the other options unchanged and we go to disks. Now in the disks we see premium disk, solid state based, so we're going to not change that. That's the default choice for all SAP workload. And we go right to networking. We have the virtual network, which I won't change. I've predefined it previously. The subnet is a default subnet, also no change here. We don't do anything around the network security group, the NSGs and we leave all the other options as default. Very important here, when you're dealing with SAP workload, please always choose accelerated networking, which is one of the standard choices you have for V3 virtual machines and for SAP workload, it should be always enabled. So next one, we look into the management of the virtual machine and we leave everything to default there there's nothing we actually need to change for what we want to show here and the same applies for guest config no extension are required here finally we're going to look at tags we don't do tags at this point in time so we're pretty much finished and we go to review and create And we're pretty much happy with what we want to do. It also passed the validation by Azure. So we just click the create button to get the virtual machine created.
So we're not gonna wait in this video until that's finished. That may take two or three minutes. And one of the great things when we actually record these sessions, we can fast forward to the point when the virtual machine has been created. So the virtual machine has now been created. It took about three minutes as predicted. Now we're going to look at the virtual machines itself. So switching to another tab, we see the virtual machine name, sub Apple 001, and we see the configuration of the availability set. And this virtual machine currently sits in fault domain zero and in the update domain zero. Now as one of the last steps, we need to create the second SAP application server. Therefore, we create a second virtual machine residing in the same availability set. So we'll go to create a resource and choose Windows Server 2016 virtual machine again. Azure will provide us a very similar set of options than the first time. We leave the subscription unchanged. I will change to my SAP resource group and I'll give the virtual machine a name called SAP Apple 002. I leave the virtual machine in Sydney. I'll choose as redundancy option availability set. Now Azure gives me the option to create a new availability set, but in our case, we obviously want to choose the availability set that we've created before called SAP availability set 001. We don't change the image, but we change the virtual machine SKU type. Another time we choose the E-series. We're going to do the same here. And we're going to choose the E for S again, S for premium storage, as mentioned before. We need to provide a username and a password. And we leave the other options unchanged, go to disk, and from there on, I'll just shorten this a bit and go to the point when the virtual machine has been created. So again, three minutes later, the virtual machine has been created. And as mentioned before, SAP Apple 001 has been created in fault domain zero, in update domain zero. And if we have a look at sub apple 2 that has been created in fault domain 1 and update domain 1 so that worked just fantastic and we can see that azure basically places the two different virtual machines on two different fault and update domains so in order to avoid an impact a major impact to the service in case one of the domains become unavailable now, since most of you won't use the Azure portal to create virtual machines and availability sets, but rather use ARM templates or PowerShell or a combination of both, here are the PowerShell commands that we can use in order to create an availability set and create virtual machines, basically just what we've done in the Azure portal. And for the availability set, we use setting parameters like the location and the name and the resource group, but there's one parameter, which I briefly would like to highlight, which is SKU. Now, SKU goes back to unmanaged disk, which hopefully no one of you will still use, but you may come across it in old deployments. Um, unmanaged disk is something we no longer recommend, particularly in the SAP space. And the command you see here is basically you tell Azure to align the storage in the background to ensure that not just the virtual machine are being handled by availability sets and placed on different fault domains and update domains, but also the storage, because it doesn't really help you if your virtual machine runs on different fault domains, but the storage that runs the operating system does not. That sort of wouldn't really work well. The second comment is basically just creating two virtual machines with a loop, which you can see again, no rocket science here, pretty much straightforward. You just specify some of the minimum parameters to create a virtual machines and off you go. So much for this overview. You can find more technical enablement videos on this YouTube channel. And if you want to get notified on new videos released, please subscribe. 
Also, please do not hesitate to leave your comments on this video, and if you like, please give us your vote. Thanks for watching.